Welcome to section 15.3, the center of data, mean, median, and mode. Here are the topics and objectives, standards, vocabulary, and concepts. So when we have a collection of numerical data, such as scores, heights, the first question is, what is typical? <clears throat> what represents this data and what is the center? So when a data set is really large, it's really helpful to know this. So for example, if we've got a bunch of SAT scores in a given year, no one person would want to look at the entire data set. It could be overwhelming or impossible. So instead we want ways of understanding the nature of data, in particular, maybe even a single number to summarize it. So measures of center, to say what is representative or typical, we commonly use mean, median, and mode. And here's the first thing I want to say is please don't teach these with range. Range is not a measure of center. A measure of center is mean, median, and mode. We're looking for what is typical. These provide a single number summary of a whole set of data. So we need to be really careful because if we're just looking at one number, that's going to say a lot. And we call these measures of the center. Let's start with the mean or the average. It's the arithmetic mean or the mean or the average. And what, all we do is we add up all the numbers and divide this by the sum of the numbers. So we've got 7, 10, 11, 8, and 10. There are, we add them up, we divide them by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we get our mean. All right, so what, that's how we calculate it, but what does it actually tell us? So go ahead and try the next exploration, and we'll see how that goes. So here's our explorations. Remember, don't skip these. Um, take your time. Um, these are really important and they will translate to the classroom. So here you need your snap together cubes. If you don't have them, please go to the website to play with some digital interactive snap cubes and press play when you're ready to move on. All right, so what you saw in our last exploration was leveling out the mean. So although we define the means in terms of adding and dividing, we can think of it as a list of numbers as obtained by leveling out the numbers so that all the numbers become the same. For example, consider this list, 4, 3, 6, 5, and 2. Now let's represent it with blocks, 4, 3, 6, 5, and 2. Now, if we arrange the blocks so that all five towers become the same height, the common height is the mean. Why? When we calculate the mean numerically, we first add the numbers all up. So we kind of put all of the blocks in one giant cube. And then in terms of the blocks, adding would tell us the total number of blocks in all five towers. And then when we divide it by number of five, we're seeing how many towers, how many, how many blocks go in each of those five towers. So here when we level, we can think of, okay, this um, three needed to get a little higher. So they got one of the orange, and then this um, pink got two of the orange, I'm sorry, one orange and one purple. In other words, as you were determining the number of blocks in each towers, so as you will see in the next, act, next exploration, some problems will be easy to solve by thinking of the mean in terms of leveling out. So don't skip this exploration. You can use those interactive um, blocks if you want or just kind of visualize it and press play when you're ready to move on. Another way to think about the mean is the balancing point. And this is really appropriate with dot plots or histograms. Think of a dot plot as like a seesaw and that balance on a fulcrum when the fulcrum is placed at an appropriate spot. So where if you have, you know, three dots over here and one over here, you're not going to place it over here. It's going to go way up, right? So we want to place it where it's going to balance it. So you can probably tell that the dot plot bal will balance if a fulcrum is placed under the number six and the mean is also at six. So why is the mean at the location of a fulcrum? So we're not gonna go into too much detail here, but basically it's how levers work and knowing that for data to the right of the mean, the sum of all the distances from the mean of this data is equal to the sum of all the distances from the mean of the data to the left. And by thinking of it as a balance point, we can quickly estimate the mean. So again, it's looking at the distance from each other from the mean. So explore it a little more in this problem set here, in this exploration, and then press play when you're ready to move on. So this is a great research story, and I encourage you to pause it here and read this as well. 
All right, let's do some examples. Shantae caught 17 ladybugs every day for four days. How many ladybugs does Shantae need to catch on the fifth day so that she will have caught on average 20 ladybugs per day over the five days? Solve this problem in two different ways and explain our solutions. All right, well, let's solve this in our first way, maybe without any pictures, right? We know that to add the mean she did for four days, she got 17. So 17 plus 17 plus 17 plus 17, day one, two, three, four, and we don't know the fifth day, but we know it's going to be over five days, and we know we want the mean to be 20. So we could add that up. That would be four times 17 plus x over five equals 20. So then we would multiply this by five, multiply this by five, four times 17 Actually, let's just write that out. So that would be 68 plus x equals 100 minus 68 from both sides, x equals 32. So she has to catch 32 ladybugs on her fifth day. Okay, let's make sense of this with a leveling off. All right, so on day one, she's going to have a block of 17, a block of 17, a block of 17, and a block of 17. Now, we don't know the height of the fifth day, but we know that it needs to be taller because she wants an average of 20. So that means she needs a taller block here because there's no way these are gonna average to 20. Those are gonna average to 17. So if she wants the average to be 20, let's start with 20, okay? That's the minimum amount. Now, let's think about how we could get all of these to also be 20, to level this off to get the mean to be 20. We know we want it to be 20, so what would we need to add to each of these blocks to get the mean to be 20? Well, we would add three to all of them. How many threes did we add? You could say four times three or 12. So we need to add three to all those and we need this as well. So it's not just 20 that she needs, but she also needs to get all of those so that she can give it to them, right? So she can level that off. So it'd be 20 times four times three or 20 plus 12, 32. So you can look at it in either way. Let's do another example. John's average income over a four-year period was 25000 What would John's average annual income have to be for the next three years so that his average annual income over the seven-year period would be 50000 All right, let's do um, the algebra way first. Okay, we know over four years, 25000 So over four years, 25000 plus we need three years, and we don't know, X. What's the total going to be? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, seven. And we want it to be 50,000. Okay, let's solve this. So we're going to multiply both sides by seven. Oops. By seven. So we get four times 25,000. So that's 100,000. Plus 3x equals 350,000. We're going to subtract 100,000. So we get 3x equals 250,000. We're going to divide both sides by 3. We get x equals 83,333, just about. Okay, now let's level it off. So we know that for four years, and we're just going to kind of say each bar represents um, 10,000. 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now we know we need three more years. 1, 2, 3. And we know we want the mean to be 50. So we've got to level these up. We need these to get up to 50. So what do each of these need to be? 25, 25, 25, 25. So we need these three stacks. So we need these three stacks plus four times 25, right? These three stacks plus four times 25. So, so the total amount here is going to be 50, 100, 150 plus 100 is 250. We need a total of that, but we need to divide that over three blocks. 
So when we divide 250 by 3, we get 83.333. And if you remember, each block is 10,000. So we got to multiply that back by 10,000. And we're going to get 83,333. Okay, that's one more. Three. There we go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> We'll pause here and we'll come back and we'll do a couple more examples before you try them on your own.